Advent 9, Common Loon. Most days in December, the northern lakes where I grew up chop and slap and slosh. But an eerie music is missing. It's as if the ancient shamans have quit their ritual chants and left the circle to the shuffles and mumbles of onlookers. Glossy black above, white beneath, glinting in white banded necklaces, chin straps, and dappled robes. Common loons glided on the lakes from May to October, piercing souls with their calls. The striking plumage, the calls, all in spring and summer is in the service of offspring. In early spring, loons put on their black and white ritual dress to woo mates and to warn off rivals. The males rise up in the water, beating their heavy wings, yodeling, signaling, this is my mate, my lake, my nest, my chick, ready to press that insistence to the death. If an adversary approaches any of these, he seems to laugh manic with alarm. If a mate or chick drifts too far, the partner or parent will wail, here, come here. 10 million years before any human heard them, loons shivered the lakes with their calls. But by early September, they prepare for another life. Surviving chicks have grown to independence. Adults, freed from the need to mate and ever defend one's own, shed their bold identity. They let the spectacular feathers fall away to be replaced by plain gray. Through the fall, they gather and swim in peaceable flocks, former rivals and all, feeding communally. They give up their piercing calls for gentle hoots to bond with and assure each other, I'm here, we're here. Together, they were gathering strength. When ice began to crackle the lake edges, the adults set out on an arduous journey. Built heavy and solid boned for deep diving, Looms have to flap their stout wings continuously, 250 times every minute, to stay aloft. No missing even a single beat, not for seven or eight hundred miles. Their young were not with them. Juveniles lingered on their birth lakes and set out later small groups of them alone, left to an inner guide to pilot them to a place they've never been. All who were strong enough to survive the trip are floating now along the Atlantic coast. Regrouped, they're resting, regaining strength. There's yet another exertion to come, one of a different order and more threatening. In late winter, the 22 flight feathers that carried each bird here will all drop out at once. Then if they try to fly, they fall. They swim slowly as their bodies siphon energy into the growing of all new flight feathers. Their bold and brilliant summer selves have vanished. Adrift, winter loons go silent. They are not the breathtaking, thrilling birds we looked and listened for all spring and summer. These are merely gray birds bobbing on the gray ocean waters, vulnerable and small. Do they remember who they were a season ago or imagine who they might be in the next? They give no sign. They ride the waves, hushed.
nearly invisible. 